If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this rare... But hey. random, yeah. I love the random ones. Episode is it random? I don't know. I feel, I feel like we. Mm-hmm. I feel like we stayed in a, a, a central. Topic. We did. We yeah, did. We didn't really true. have any direction. The we, future. Yeah, it's kind of like the Putting future of fitness. Philosopher caps on technology, social media, lots and lots of speculation. So here's kind of what we covered in this uh, 87, 90 minute episode of Mind Pump. We start off by talking about my average testosterone. Uh, Everly Well test. I took a testosterone test, got my results back. I got normal testosterone, a little depressing. Uh, actually, we are wah, sponsored wah. by Everly Well. If you go to Everly Well, that's E V E R L Y W E L L dot com and enter the code Mind Pump, you'll get 15% off any test. They have women's health test, food intolerance test, men's health test, testosterone test, lots of different types of tests. Then we talk about cannabis and its potential impact on testosterone. We talk about technology's detrimental impact on health. We talk about the Hunza people of Pakistan. These are long, long living people. I think I said their name wrong on yeah. this episode. I think I said Hunza. The, the Hadza people, but yeah. it's actually the Hunza people. We talk about simulations and problem solving, psychedelics and health revolutions, or not. The melding of holistic and Western medicine. 3D printed food. That's right. You can print food pretty soon. Mm. Engineering movies and music. And the challenges of sex robots, and finally, short-lived social media successes. So we talk a lot about a lot of different things in this episode. Also, this month, we are launching, or we have launched, our newest and most advanced hardcore bodybuilding-style MAPS program. It's called MAPS Split. Now, I do want to say this. It is not for beginners at all. You need to have some experience if you go into this program. There's lots of volume. It will fry your body if you're a beginner, but it's very, very effective. It is advanced. It is a body part split done the MAPS way. Uh, And there's four days left to get $50 off. So it's on sale during our initial launch. To get MAPS split, go to mapssplit.com. Enter the code SPLIT50 for $50 off. We also have simultaneously a promotion on our no equipment required program or a program that's designed for people who travel or want to work out at home called Maps Anywhere. That program is half off, so 50% off. You can find that program and other programs at mindpumpmedia.com. Doug. Yes. That doesn't affect can you get? Can you find, because I feel like we're just upgrading everything. We got, this is called the headphone amplifier, uh-huh. which I love. And then we have the new teleprompter, which is... Amazing. I want amazing. I want new custom mics. Yeah. I want my own mic. Custom mics? I don't want my mic to look like your mic at all. No. It doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) It does look different than mine. (laughs) Boom. It's too it's still Bro, his uh, wish came true right away. Yeah, you've been served. (laughs) You've been served. See how I do that? Your wish is my command. (laughs) Let's uh what like I'm with you. I want like an old school rock and roll looking one. Yeah, or like see you would make that would be cool and I want something that's all bedazzled out, dude. Just crazy. You want a bedazzled Uh, mic? Yeah, Yeah. I can see that. All shiny. I don't know what I would want. Yeah, colorful. I want it to be colorful. I don't yeah, I don't know. I like mine the way it is. I mean me and this mic have a long history. Stay the same. But what I was going to say is I want, because we have these things now, just for people listening who don't know what I'm talking about, it's this little thing that we attach to they our really headphones. They really don't give a shit. It doesn't do it That all. I can it turn up or down my headphones. It does not change their experience. Except for other podcasters. But see, here's yeah. the problem. Oh, that's a good point. Other yeah. podcasters might appreciate it. But see, here's the problem. Fair I can't enough. turn Adam and Justin down or up. So I want one that also allows me <laughs> to turn them you down. You want to turn us down? Yeah, so I could just Asshole. be like, yeah, so I could say something yeah. and then turn them down real quick so they can't that's reply. Funny. I don't want to hear you. Yeah, so yeah. shut up. Uh, <laughs> huh? he mutes you. Huh? But how about that teleprompter, huh? Dude, wow. that's that is great. Thanks Tom Bill you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, when we were there, he was he had the teleprompter reading like god, that's yeah, a fucking like, we nice. We have to figure this out. Yeah, so what and is the, this? the funny thing is, you know where that place is located that we we got it? Where he yeah, where Tom gets his? Where? Here, Campbell. It's, it's in Campbell. Is it? Yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah, Doug drove there and oh, bought man. it. He said there was some other cool stuff there too, like the new lights and everything we'll get for the other room. What does the new lights do? Just like they're like bars, you know, so that and they can mount them up on the wall. There's so much cool stuff. You Isn't can buy that now funny? How many like companies are right next to us? You didn't even know we're there. Like I, there was that Soyve or whatever company was like. It's the in fuck Felton. Is that? It's like um, 
I don't know if it's like teriyaki sauce or like some kind of soy sauce stuff. <laughs> That's a random. It's so, dude. It's, <laughs> why it was in <laughs> Felton though. That's like where I live. I was like, <laughs> what? Yes. But why were you looking at that the first? <laughs> I don't know. Like, like hello. I people was be, out and I was like, oh yeah. Is it, it a, was a popular brand. Oh, is, I was gonna say, yeah. is, it, is it a popular brand? Yeah, I've never it's heard of it. fucking asshole. Justin was looking up ways to lower his high testosterone levels. He's like, more yeah, I soy. Like, I need xenoestrogens yeah. in my life. Yeah. Speaking of testosterone, you guys sent in your kits today. I, Mine's yeah. mine's going in out today. So what do you mean going out? Did you put it in the mail? No, it's out and out in the front lobby to go. I went looking for a blue mailbox for us and I couldn't find one. What are you doing, bro? You you have to freeze it before bro. you mail it out. I did. So it's frozen right now. Yeah. And yours went out, right, Justin? Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting on the <laughs> results. So my- I registered it. I sent it out, or I'm gonna send it out, so I should get mine sometime next week. Justin should be getting his this week. Yeah, right? this week it should be coming in. I think yours is going to probably be pretty high. Yeah. I think it'll be higher than mine. I've never tested it, so this is like completely from, yeah. you know, day one. Like, let's see where I'm at. I, I, uh, I'm going to do an experiment soon where I'm reducing and then going to see if I can eliminate my cannabis consumption for a little while to see how it affects my I feel like you were a little discouraged by yours. Mm-hmm. I think you pride yourself. You as think being, that affects it, though, really? I think you pride the, yourself yep. on being yeah. like the, the super, like... You know, super libido guy over here, and oh, you know, there's so many factors that play into libido. You know, neurotransmitters play a factor. Hot girlfriend, yeah, mm. hot girlfriend. Thanks, honey. <laughs> uh, it feels like it sounds like raising a cold testosterone. <laughs> yeah, no, um, but uh, uh, yeah, I was in the middle. You know what I mean? I'm kind of like I want to be a higher than the middle. Yeah, you know you're what just I mean? kind of average, dude. Yeah, like what the I'm fuck? really not I'm impressed. Not average. Come on, Sal. Yeah, I'm really yeah, not fuck you. Yeah. Really not impressed. No, but I, I think, you're better than that. But no, for sure. Uh, Cannabinoids or cannabis, it's, and, it's, in animal studies, have, it yeah, does affect yeah, the endocrine yeah, system. Yeah, but it's it's uh it's temporary though. It's like uh, only twenty four hours. Yeah, isn't it for mainly for chronic users? Like uh, would yeah, be, what, you'd see well, you're it. in a room of chronic, chronic. users. Chronic, <laughs> <laughs> hence the pun. What are you talking? Yeah. yeah, he's not. It's only for people that use it all the time. Yeah. Like, Weird. well, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm trying Weird. to say here is that. I use it like four days a week or five days a week. I'm gonna go down to like once a week and then and then none for a while and see if it if what it does if it changes it yeah in a positive way. You know what I mean? Hmm. Or if I get more testosterone. You know what? I didn't I didn't even think about that. If I smoked uh, last night, did I smoke last night? I don't remember if I. Yeah. Smoked. What about sleep too? <laughs> did, I wasn't. You did. I, didn't I, get I guess that's the answer. Yes. The <laughs> Well, I'm, just, yeah, I'm already I, making excuses. Well, no, for because I do know, and I, I do know that it affects you within 24 hours, right? So if you smoke, uh, you know, if you were to test your 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 testosterone level, and then you were to go smoke a bunch of weed, and then turn right around and test it again, you'll show that it's lower. But then I heard that within 24 hours of that, you you would rebound back to your. So normal. the studies are mixed. So they'll they'll test a group of you know men uh, who are regular users of cannabis. And they'll find that their testosterone levels are average, like the average person's. But I don't like those studies because they're not comparing their baseline. You know what I mean? So it's not like you, you're testing someone, seeing what their normal levels are, then have them use cannabis for a while, and then test them. In animal studies, predictably, you can lower testosterone levels with high doses of uh, THC in particular. Um, so the, it, the, the jury is, is out. The jury is still out. I... For me, I want to see what happens for me. I want to see if it affects it. And here's the other thing, too. Cannabinoids are very anti-inflammatory. They've got some positive health effects, especially if you have autoimmune issues. So it could very well be raising my testosterone because those are mm. issues that I have. Mm. You know what I mean? So if it makes me healthier, then it might do the opposite and, and make my... Like, well, let's imagine I go off cannabis completely, and I don't need it like I used to for gut issues. I used to need it, but now... I think I can get away with not using it for for a while. But let's say I test it out and I'm like, oh man, my gut issues are getting bad again. I really need it for that gut inflammation. Pretty sure that will be worse for me. You see what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Right, right. I've been avoiding sad movies. You know, to prepare for this. Really? Yeah. To get your. your, (laughs) Did you did you uh, masturbate the day before? Yeah, of course. Okay, so wow. <laughs> I mean, when do I not? Stupid question. It's like, yeah. did, did I brush my teeth? Bro, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. asshole. Yeah. It's like, did you put on your clothes today? Be- so <laughs> yeah, so look at it. Two things. One, the funniest thing that happened. We were. I don't remember where we were, in, but Justin and I were doing something on our phones, and then if you just type W in the in the in the like if you're on Safari this or whatever, throw me and you bus. just go to type in like www dot whatever, just type in W Pornhub. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, away. Like, right away. Right away. <laughs> 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 like, You're like, oh no, it's onto know, my a, habits. You know, it's a smartphone right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know where you want to go. Yeah. I got you. But the second NSA. Yeah, I don't remember who did it first, but we one of us did it first, and then we were making fun of the other person. So then, yeah, I think it was I did it first, and I'm like, let me see. Yeah, you did it, and you were like, you were typing in maybe it was like three or four letters, and then I was like, watch this, and it was W, and it was like. Yeah, just <laughs> right to it. I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> In, uh, busted. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is that abstaining from ejaculation for a week will raise testosterone. It goes down after that. Mm. Uh, but if you abstain for like a week, you'll well, get a Well, I know spike guys that used to do that like in football and stuff like that. That if they had a big game yeah. on a Friday night or whatever, that could that, be some wisdom in that. Well, that used to be a big. I thought yeah, that was a wise tale. Wise tale, exactly. That's what I thought. With like boxing coaches and, and football coaches, they would always. I thought tell we me did, that. didn't we dispel Nobody that? Nobody can have a girlfriend, you know, and like didn't we dispel that out. in early mind pump days? I thought that was something we mm. talked about. So how do you test that? Like, how do they end up testing if that? Because here's how many. Think about this. How many factors? are involved when you're right, having right. sex, a bunch of sex before a big game. A, you could be getting a little bit of sleep because you're just mm. up banging all night, whatever. Right. Could be a bunch of drama because you're, you know. Exactly, like distractions, distractions. as far as now mental the, distractions. You could, you could hurt yourself if you, you know, oh, if you do it like Justin you, does. You could break your dick. Full force. Yeah. <laughs> you could hurt yourself or someone else. So aggressive. In which case, yeah. It's true. Um, there's a, my hips get sore? But besides all that, it does raise testosterone to abstain for like a short period, like a week. After if you abstain too long, your testosterone actually drops. Mm. But if you abstain for like a week, you'll get a spike in testosterone, probably because your body's trying to drive you to to mate. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, hey, so dummy, get use this, this thing. out of me. Yeah. Use this thing. <laughs> get this out of me. It's all this backup. Yeah, yeah. and uh, maybe the aggression, you know, the aggressive factor. I don't know. Mm. What are you going to start Could your? I've, I've had a lot of people DM me ever since we brought it up on the show. We haven't. Uh, um, organize the day when we're gonna do our fast from cannabis. Have you decided? You know what might suck? We might suck on the podcast. Yeah, like we might. <laughs> you guys keep talking about it. Yeah. We might come <laughs> in. Maybe it'll every, happen. Yeah, I know. Every time, every time I'm about to, I'm like, nah, it doesn't yeah. sound like a lot of fun right now. We'll, we'll come <laughs> in and be all blah. It'll be <laughs> no creativity, no like yeah. ideas. Hey guys, what happened? Totally yesterday? flat. Oh. Yeah. No, I think I'm going to, uh, right now I'm just, I'm tapering down. <clears throat> so I'm going from like four days a week down to like maybe just on the weekend. Now I've tried this before and here's what happens. So something to be aware of. I've <clears throat> tapered off before and then what I'll notice is I'll taper off. So I'll use it less frequently, but then when I use it, I use more. Hmm. So I'll go like, oh, I didn't do any this week. Oh, it's the weekend. And then. Oh, really? Yeah. So. Oh, uh, see, I'm not like that. If I taper off, like it's crazy when I, when I just take a break for three days, I can significantly feel a difference like it, it you know it'll take and that's i use like how much i like smoke because i the cannabis you, you gauge I, it by how much you need yeah because i i all the stuff that i buy is is on the higher level of like thc so it's all pretty fucking strong it doesn't take very much for me as it is and for me it's like this you know two to six puff range and when i'm pushing like six puffs for me to feel the, the Especially same. the stuff you have. That's that's what I mean. Fire. So, so six puffs of that. I mean, if I'm having to do that much, that means I feel like I'm consistently using it too much. But easily, if I drop down to three days, I just take a break for three days in a row, and then go back and have a, two times. I'm like, woo, yeah. on another planet. I notice for me is if is I, I get less of the positive effects and more of the negative effects if it's too much, too consistently. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I I lose that good feeling, that euphoria, or whatever. If I just go to or my tolerance, just like like Adam, it just gets too high. So, yeah. did you? Sh I'm sorry to totally change subject, but I just something just popped in my head. I was I don't know what reminded me of this. There was that. What's that? That cartoon you guys told me was it Wally -E to watch or whatever? Yeah, yeah Wally. -E. Which one of you posted the? I did. Oh, it was you? Yeah. Oh my god, dude! The meme of the guy with the virtual reality <laughs> yeah, glasses he's on. There, the gut, and dude. That was so good. Have Spot you seen it yet? Huh? I, no, I still haven't watched the movie. Dude, oh, it's yeah. one of the best. It's one of the best for a kids movie. Cartoons awesome. out there. Yeah, it's one of the best kids cartoons out there. But it is a little depressing. That part is a little bit depressing. Well, it is, and I, it you know it's been on my mind a lot. You know, it's it, ever since the book that you guys got gave me so much shit. I'm not going to say it because I've said it so many times on the show. And you're irresistible. Just, <laughs> why are you going to do Adam that? Adler. Why are you going to do that, Adler. dude? <laughs> it's so great that you know the name and the author and you've well, never read you it. repeated something enough times. <laughs> I'll remember it. <laughs> Ever since then, though, man, it's just I I think I'm just hyper aware of all, all the stuff like that around me where I think before that I was kind of just blindly walking around and doing my own thing, even consuming it myself, where now 
my level of awareness with that is is just different than what it was before. I don't know if I shared with you guys. I don't know if I shared this on the show or not, but you know, I've been going to all the playoff games and <clears throat> you know, sitting down by. I mean, literally, like right behind the, these courtside seats are just amazing seats, amazing it, it, it experience for anybody to do that. I don't care mm-hmm. who you are, and if, definitely if you're into basketball, like it's just so awesome to be right there. And it's so awesome that I just I want to. And could, we had friends that were there, and they were across the arena, a little bit higher up, and you know they wanted to meet at the club and and have drinks and stuff like that. And I look at Katrina, I'm like, uh, uh-uh. uh, like I don't want to leave these seats. I don't want to take my eyes off of this experience this whole time because it's so cool. Mm-hmm. And but yet everybody that was was around me is you know selfie and Instagram and videoing and texting their friends and you know I'm, I'm like it was really distracting for me to see that the whole time. I wanted to like grab everybody by their head and just be like, you know what, you know, what's funny is that you, as you're saying this, I'm realizing just how, how much the capturing images in video market has changed. And I don't mean it from a real retail standpoint, although it's changed dramatically there. I mean, when, when I was a kid, when we were kids, you took pictures <coughs> You went to get them developed. Mm-hmm. You would make photo albums. You'd have photo albums at, at, your, at your home, and people would come and come look at them and, and share them it. or whatever. Nobody does that really that much anymore. To, it's like it's almost like it's it's there's it's they're so easy well, that you don't even look at photos anymore. Yeah, it is. It's 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 lost its mystique, right? And so they well, have, almost its value. They've tried to like bring it back in some digital form, and so they've had like those you know picture frames that kind of slide images across, and so mm-hmm. it's like you kind of capture some of the a few best of ones. Yeah, I have those, and and they're cool. There's like background you know visuals and stuff for conversation, but yeah. I think you're right that uh, that used to be a big part of like hosting people over and like, you know, you, you, you talk about some trip you went on and then you kind of show them like all the pictures and images Dude, you captured. M- most it. people's photos and images are on social media. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't save them anywhere. I mean, really in, anywhere else, or I don't really look through them. Yeah. I post What's them, the people look at them and they're gone. Well, that's part of the part that I think is cool. Like when I look at it, I go like the, my, my still my favorite Instagram to go through is Doug's cause he, he posts so infrequently. Yeah. Like I feel like ours is so much cause we have to stay kind of active on it. Yeah. But with Doug, like it's not a big deal. It's, it's not part of his job really. Right. Is to do that. So he just, whenever he kind of feels like it and he tends to do it like these little milestones within the business. So I love, Love to go it's on a time it's, capsule. It is so I love to go back there and just kind of like, oh shit, I remember dude, the, this. Oh, I remember the first time we did that. But these like, platforms own them, don't they? Don't yeah. they own these photos? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of crazy. It if you think crazy. so, it's it's we it's it's different. It's very very different uh, than it than it used to be. So I don't know what that. Well, means. you see like Kodak, and you see some of these other like major companies like going completely Gone. out of business. Does and, Kodak even exist anymore? Well, they just they just finally like completely gave up. And, and I just read something recently that they, uh, I mean, they were still selling like certain cameras that you could. Um, you know, like you could process and, and do it the old school way because there was still hipsters do out there. Do you know the story on them? They actually have a cool st- that There's a good, like not good, it's like a shitty story, right? It's like they passed on something or they didn't transition out of a certain, I wish I remember this story. I know I read it somewhere. The the the, the whole, just their whole fall. Like, I don't know if, do you know mm-hmm. how they fell and like how it went, how it ended up? Yeah, I don't remember. Right? Yeah, the details on that either, but I do remember there was something in there because uh, I don't know if it, it it was something to do with printers or, you know, yes. yeah, so, right? yeah, it was something along those lines. I don't remember. They didn't move to like the digital. Yeah. They didn't it, go digital. Or yeah. Something like and that. They were yeah. still doing like the Polaroid. I don't remember what it was. I'm completely probably fucking this up I right know. now, but I know they had, there's a cool story behind, you know, it's like one of those things where businesses that don't, you know, pivot or move like when, as the, as mm-hmm. the market mm-hmm. changes and then what ends up happening to them. Kodak is a good example mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's definitely changing. Um, it's changing how we're, how we're built using all these, you know, filming and looking at everything through our phones like forward head and forward shoulder that is something is exploding okay, no. dude. so i and i Ugh. i never saw i've been kids meaning with that to tell before. doug this so yeah. doug just walked in the room i'm glad he did it this time i want to do a video and i want to i want to call it like iphone posture you know something along those lines because you i'm i and where this really hit home for me because of course i could sit there and i could look at all these people that are and, and judge all day long but i'm i notice myself mm-hmm and I'm aware of it. Like I'm fully aware of like when I'm sitting like that, mm-hmm. like it's not good posture and I try and counter it. I've even been doing these exercises mm-hmm. 
where I'm like mm. constantly bringing, looks like a chicken head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pulling my head back, and 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 I've done that like with a resistant like a towel Just keep or your mouth with closed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all. Just a little advice, that's asshole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I I've seen how it started to shape my posture being somebody who's aware of it. And I think, wow, how many of these kids that are 12, like I, if I was, that was, if I had iPhone when I was 12, like I'm not thinking about mm-hmm. that. Like that's not, no. I'm not, your cons- body, not your, concerned you're about You're just that. loving that you have access to all this right. cool your, shit. Your body totally shapes towards what you do most of or what you do a lot of. Like I'll give you some simple, easy examples. Like if you look at our feet, you know, modern in modern societies, our feet are shaped to wear shoes. Our feet now... You know, I'm 39 years old, right? My feet are well suited to walk in shoes. They are terribly suited to walk barefoot. This is most people, right, in, in, in Western societies. My body is well suited to sit in a chair. It is terribly suited to sit in a squat. Mm-hmm. Now, some cultures still do this. Like you go to certain, you know, Asian cultures, for or, example. Or, or, it's it's a a resting squat. Pose. or yeah. arguably to even stand. Yeah. I mean, I get uncomfortable. If I stand in the same spot for... 45 minutes start straight. feeling weird things oh, start hurting yeah how weird is that your back oh i can't stand too long my back hurts that's not supposed to happen I know. <laughs> right your back's not supposed to hurt when you're doing normal things Dude, to the to the foot point like i when i brought up the example of like creek walking and we were doing it barefoot and like going through the terrain and everything in the rocks man that was eye-opening to see how you know hard it was to like regain that connection and like really use my toes and like move my feet the way i need to because i've been wearing shoes well think about think about this way let's imagine imagine that you were you were raised and brought up wearing really really dark glasses your whole life like maybe like a welder's helmet you ever wear a welder's helmet super Mm -hmm. super dark right i mean you wouldn't get made fun of it all yeah no but imagine if you saw everything through that for your entire life when you took that off everything would seem too bright and overwhelming your eyes would you wouldn't be able to adjust the 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 neurons in the brain that process light and process vision would be overwhelmed Mm -hmm. it would be painful it'd be hard to, to to do that now yeah, this you is, almost normalize it, right? Because that's all you would know. That's all you would know. Your brain is developed around it. Now, this is what happens with our feet. Like if, if you take your shoes and socks off and walk around barefoot outdoors, and every time you take a step, you're like, ouch, ooh, pebble, ah, this, ah, that's what's happening. Yeah. It's too much information, too much Overloaded. sensation. You're, you're, you don't know how to perceive it, so it seems and feels overwhelming. You don't know how to do it. The, really, the only way, can you reverse it? No, not at this point. You can make inroads, but at this point now, many of the hard wired things in the brain have been developed through childhood and ad- adolescence. Oh, you don't think that we can you, you don't think we can reverse that? You can reverse a lot of it, but it's not this so I'll give you an example. When they find there have been children in 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 the past that uh people have found who were feral, feral children. Have you heard of these before? Mm-hmm. These are kids that were for whatever reason, like terrible circumstances left in the wilderness or whatever. And so they've never learned how to speak um, or be a human. And so then people will find them. Some of them will, there's actual true stories of them, you know, of, of these kids being raised literally by other animals and stuff. So they'll find these kids and they'll be like 10 it's or Tarzan. 11. Jungle yeah. book. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be like 10 or 11 and they'll, they'll, they'll always have developmental issues. Always. Now you can definitely teach them to talk better, teach them, but they always have dev- developmental issues because all those formative years are lost. Right. It's in a very impressionable time yeah. for them. Yeah. So all of us, we could do all the foot and ankle exercises in the world. We could walk barefoot from now until we die and we'll make great improvements, but we'll never reach the potential that we had before. We are doing that now with kids and technology and their posture mm-hmm. and how they sit and what they focus on to the point where these guys are going to be in, you know, they're going to be 25, 30 years old, have back problems. And they'll they'll fix a lot of it, but boy, that's going to be some of that will be permanent. You know, yeah. it's yeah. kind of crazy. I mean, there's certain companies that are noticing this, and they're they're trying to kind of uh, you know create products to to address this, and with postural um, sort of cueing things that, that like shirts or the strap that kind of goes and pulls your shoulders back. But again, this is another one of those things. This is like training wheels. This is something that. You know, you have to learn how to intrinsically do that on your own and mm. and own that versus like having something pulling you back physically because it's just not going to. Did you ever try that shirt on that Josh Trent had? I know he he, oh, was, he, he talked to me, yeah, quite a bit about that. I have, I didn't get a chance. I to What's try it, it called again? I don't know, but I have it in my closet and I have yet to try it on. It, okay. it gives you feedback, right, with your posture. Yeah. I apologize. He bro, didn't give me one, so 
Yeah. That's oh, he did? No. He likes me more. Yeah, he, he does. He's yeah. a big fan. You're handsomer. Probably. That's probably yeah, what yeah. it is. It's probably it's your why. face. It makes, it makes sense. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's your face. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. What, it's like we almost don't know. We can predict, but we don't know what like future health problems we're creating with. Because what happens is something will get introduced into society that greatly benefits us uh, for, for, for a lot of different things. But and so we adopt it very quickly. Like, do you think like that we technology got adopted? Do you think we don't quickly. know? I think we know. More. I think we're onto it. I think we don't give a fuck. I think we don't care. Mm. And I think the companies that are pr- producing a lot of this stuff don't care. I'll give you an example. Of what I, I, I mean, I don't think we're. I don't think we're a bunch of you know Neanderthals running running around going like, oh, I wonder what this is going to do to us. It's no. like, I, I think that, it's more like, what can we do? No, I think That's the I mentality. think yeah, yeah, but I think I think there's a lot that we don't know. Like, I'll give you a good example. Like when we discovered germ theory and invented antibiotics, we're like, oh, cool, this cures everything. Throw antibiotics on everything, not realizing that we were going to create. We were going to create problems in the future because we didn't really know, we didn't understand the full scope yeah. of. We thought what germs was, were the problem, so yeah, let's attack them. Yeah, like we know if you're less active, what's going to happen. We know about obesity. We know about all that other stuff, but we don't quite know. I'll give you a good example that we're just like I can speculate on. This like quick cut uh, society or quick cut you know technology where I'm looking at short video clips where I'm looking at things from you know I'm constantly mm-hmm. being preoccupied with. With, I'm never bored. I'm never alone. I always have something to do with There's something. There's no to watch. pauses. Yeah, like we don't know what that's going to do on the brain. We have yeah. no idea what that's going to do. Oh, on, see, I disagree. I think. I mean, again, referring back to the book, like they get into this. Like this is what they knew when they created it. Hmm. They knew that they were creating this highly addictive tool that that was going to cause people to keep coming back. What do you think is going to happen to them? Mm. Like anything else? Like it's if you get the and that's what's happening right now is this behavioral addiction. But I think nobody was nobody who created it or had anything to do with creating it didn't know that i think they're fully aware of that and i think we're we still have some people out there that are unaware themselves but as a consumer using it so they're just naive to it and they don't care to try and figure it out i mean i could argue that or i would i could say that i was in that place just three four years ago you know looking at purely as a tool and a cool thing for me it was more of a distraction from other things in my life that i want to do because I, I wasn't born with it mm-hmm. you know i didn't we didn't i didn't use facebook and instagram that's what i mean like we all have the ability we're, we're in that generation that what do they call us? Like we were born analog, but then we grew up in you know digital, digital or something like yeah, that. Analog to digital. Yeah. So like we know that we had we know the contrast. You know what I mean? But like like my kids and you know kids now they don't know they, they don't know they don't know boredom. They don't know boredom. They don't know I'm gonna go ride my bikes with my friends the same way. They don't know like oh I have nothing to do. I better figure something out. It's like constant. You know they can they always have something that they can do yeah. with their electronics. They always have. They don't know what it's like to not be able to find information immediately. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's a different thing. And we don't know what that means yeah. necessarily. Like when we were, you know, when you were a kid, you want to know something, you asked an adult. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, now you just Google I think, it. I think it's a bad thing. I, th- I think we can say it's a bad thing. I think it's for, for sure. It might make, be both. It's, it's, it's almost unearned. It's for sure making you less present. Hmm. So if you believe that it's important to be present, either sometimes or ever Mm -hmm. then i think we could say that it's a bad thing because and that and people say that oh they're you know these kids are they're socially awkward now and that's that's not true not all of them are that way some of them are still they're still outgoing people i think it's more people are less present than they were before now that can then in turn cause people to be socially awkward and not know how to interact with a human being sitting in front of them they know how to interact with someone via text or Instagram or Facebook mm-hmm. or in DMs or on video games that they're talking to them across the world, but put that same person in front of them and then the way they interact is is different. Mm-hmm. So I think it's more of a lack of being present uh, than anything else. I don't know. It's um, it's going to be an interesting uh, problem to figure out. Like for sure parents, <clears throat> a lot of parents are putting kind of restrictions with their kids, but it's not really a big um it's not really a big thing yet because like i said we haven't seen a generation or two come out of it yet mm. where we can see all these problems clearly yeah you know where, where, where it's going to be more regular for parents to be like okay you're limited you're limited you shouldn't be using this at this age like we don't know like here's another one right like we, we talk to people like ben greenfield and dr mercola and they talk about the dangers of wi-fi we don't know we haven't really fully seen 
what Wi-Fi could potentially do to us. Now, I'm not saying it's super bad. You know or, the scary or, part is? is like, that we're exposed to it all the time. We're like the best test group for that. That's what fucking scares the shit out of me. <laughs> like, Silicon Valley has to be the worst when it comes to that. Like, we... We're so spoiled now that anywhere we drive, like you, uh, your phone is now almost always connected to Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It wasn't, but maybe two, three years ago, that didn't exist. I remember when they passed that in San Jose that they were going to do that. That mm-hmm. you know, everywhere you go, you pretty much can log into some Wi-Fi. Where you know, just five, ten years ago, it wasn't like that at all. You mm-hmm. get bombarded with it. Doctor right Mercola right. says one of the best things you could do to to counteract the the dangers of Wi-Fi exposure is fasting. Because of its ability to, you know, regenerate new cells and prevent hmm. mutations. And this stuff is like why that. I really think that, and you know, leave it. I guarantee somebody will fucking package it and market it and sell it. You know, shame on us for not doing that, but it's just not our style. But I think that your idea of the two to three day fast every month is really brilliant. It really is. I think there's so many benefits. Oh, dude, on that topic. So I read about um, the Hudza people, H U D Z A people of Pakistan. Now, there was some controversy surrounding them because there were people that, there were explorers that went there, saw these people, tr- fantastic health. And according to these people, the, their records show that they would live to 130, 140 years old. What? And that at the age of 100, they felt really good. Now, the controversy is whether or not they were counting years the same way and is it accurate or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know about well, that. Well, but hold on. But years. there's a lot of people that think that for sure these people live longer much much longer than the average mm. person and, and and they were trying to figure out why like why are they such good health mm. and uh you know of course they eat you know natural foods they're very active blah 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 but here's the big one during the winter months the hudza people because they live at very high altitudes there's yeah, no there's near the himalayas there's no food there's barely any food and so during the winter months they consume nothing for like two or three months except for maybe some apricot juice that they store mm. and so every year they go through these really long fasts and they think that that might be contributing to their their long life. Yeah, pretty interesting, right? But well, yeah, it's right really, along those lines. I mean, really interesting if they're 120, 130. Not yeah. so interesting if they're 60 and they count half years as years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot less interesting. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, it's, I mean, they're living as long as Moses. Me, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, yeah, to me, that was something. A, a minor detail. You just kind of grace yeah. right over. It does I, say that in the Bible, right? That's the people yeah, who live back then, for a long ass time. Yeah, I mean, that was that was the thing. Like it was like. 150, 200 something years. Like, you're just like, well, what? Yeah, that didn't. What if that shit was real? Add up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I feel like in our time, we're going to see people start to break through like these. This, I, I want to I believe. I want to believe like our boy Ben Greenfield is going to live to 150. I want to believe that. Mm. It would just be tragic if he doesn't. I feel like he might, he's, he experiments just, with be, so many things that like half the stuff he's experimenting with was benefiting him and the other half is like right. fucking, fucking him up. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, he doesn't know which is the like balance. If, if he dies of something at like 80 or 90, it would be like, fuck, man. Like, oh, all that? All that work. You know what? All I, that I, penis I, and anal stuff and all the, whoa. all the, <laughs> all the crazy hours of meditation. <laughs> it's so true. Is that, what, right? is that how we closed you, Adam? Yeah, dude, like, uh, you just go straight to those two uh, yeah. zones. Well, you know I mean, what? That's just a lot. I man. have no interest in living input output. I have no interest in living that long. Oh, really? Unless, unless I want to live one fifty. Well, I do too. If I'm freaking functional and move, and well, I can if take you're, care of myself, if you, if I don't want to just live. If you live to one fifty, you're going to be functional at a hundred. You're not going to live fifty years. And I, I don't know, dude. I mean, yeah, put me out, put me out of my misery if I'm just totally. I don't know, dude, because if you look at I'm Western medicine, yeah, people we're keeping people along uh, alive for a long time, but not healthy for a long time. So it's like they're alive, but they're on all these medications, they're on all kinds of crazy shit. They don't have any mobility. Really? Do you? I feel like most of the people that you see, the you know, at least when the news puts up the you know, oh, Susan over in Sacramento lived to 105, and they show a video, or she looks pretty good at 105. Are these the sm- the smuckers? What are they? <laughs> the, the, the smuckers like hundred? Yeah, you birthdays know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, what is yeah. that on the? That's I, on the. It's on the news or something. Dave Letterman yeah, show. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know where I see it, but you know they do that, and you see them, and you're like, man, they. I mean, normally the ones that live beyond a hundred you know were active or healthy or worked out or did things to keep them I, there's always exceptions mm-hmm. rules. i know someone's like well my grandfather smoked cigars every day my great-grandfather and, smoked cigarettes yeah. every day since he was like 12 and made, made it to like 92 i think yeah <laughs> <laughs> he could have lived till he was 150 son of a bitch yeah, i remember i remember when i was a kid it was so it's such a mind-blowing thing for me to learn that your ears never stop growing 
because it blew me it blew me away because it all made sense. I remember looking at old people when I was a kid and I was like, Yeah. Everybody's ears like, are so this big. Happened? Yeah. And then I learned that. I was like, Oh, that's why. <laughs> their ears never <laughs> stop growing. Nose hair and ear hair. Do you yeah. ever feel like you guys look at your own features like that and go, it's like, fuck, it's different. I look yeah. different. Like well, my ears are different than what they were ten years ago. Especially the exact like so I already have a big nose. I'm like not excited about this whole idea of like getting old. It's just like my nose and my ears are just gonna keep going. Yeah, but what if you your nose just accelerated, but then everything else is going to catch up, and your nose is going to stay about the same, because that could be a possibility. Mm. Just get real fat, yeah. Then, then your face. Oh yeah, will, that's the move, <laughs> right? Let's get big old kind of like a puppy. You know, when you say you that big old paws and shit, <laughs> flopping and around like your dog, yeah. and then you grow into the, you know your paws. They don't keep growing at the same rate as the rest of their body. They grow into the paws, right? So Wait. maybe you're going to grow into your nose. Into your Ooh, nose, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. your ears. Was your nose that big when you were a kid? Into it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. I, uh, that was always a, a pronounced feature. I don't feel like you have a big nose. You think you have a no, big nose? That's, that's, you, yeah, maybe because I got it broken like twice. So yeah, I, think that, I mean, it's a little ugly, but it's not like big. It's I, feel like it's, if yeah. it, I feel like it's normal size. I feel like you have a good nose. I actually adjusted it by myself, which was like a totally not the move. I don't mm. suggest it. What <laughs> I think I think when your makeup's all done and you've done your hair and everything like that, and we do these like little photos and stuff like that. I think you're the best looking one I, for sure. I agree. Yeah, that's what just that's what totally. Adam always tells me when yeah. you're not around. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? How do you think? How do you think we're all gonna look uh, as we age? You know what I mean? Like, you're gonna look the best because you've looked the same age since dude, 19, wait, hold on 19. I don't think I will, dude. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know what's the problem with me? I'll tell you the problem with me is that my face doesn't hold a lot of body fat, so I feel like I'm just gonna fucking. All right. I'm gonna There's get scattered out. Adam's got the chubbiest cheeks, so yeah. he's he's in. He does. Yeah, he does. He's gonna be the most youthful. Maybe in his, his his skin. Yeah, anyway, but I got maybe. no because I got skin stuff going on. I got psoriasis going on. I'm losing my hair. Like I'm gonna be a mess, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be bald. Yeah. You'll be bald. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You'll wear those cool old man hats. You know, I just know you. You'll wear like one of those golfer fedoras. Fedoras. Yeah, yeah, Justin's cool. gonna have like purely white hair yeah. in like a few years. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be like <laughs> I'm gonna be like Doc from Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Great Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty <laughs> yeah, much. I hope I age as well as it. Doug. That's what I hope. Yeah. That's a, that's. I think we're all hoping for that. That's the prayer. We're, hope, we're hoping he some of his uh, yeah. gut biome rubs off on us. A well, you're gonna bit. eat his poops though. He well, never I did guess. it. Remember, we were supposed <laughs> to do that. I, th- I thought you said that so yeah, part, if we hang out enough that part of it transfers to each other anyway. Isn't it like a mm. like a sorority girls so, and their period? Is it not yeah, the same way? Just, so far, though, I feel... Crop dust, I know that's not know, true. Some, for some bacteria like that. That's everywhere. not true. That's not how that works. So far, though, I think you guys are just using getting my... Up yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I'm not getting better. You guys are getting worse. Right? I actually believe that. I'm. T- I've had more gut issues since we. I've been hanging out with you than I ever have, dude. <laughs> or you're just pointing it out, and I was like blissfully ignorant. I was like, I'm mean, doing fine, man. <laughs> doing fine. <laughs> That's what it was. Just, yeah. ah, like always, oh, just constantly burning. Ah. <laughs> you're still. You're, you're when still... I started making comments about you painting the toilet, like, wait, we mean nobody. You know, I'm the only like, one. That nobody else like, does this. I'm the only one. Shit's like this. Just why are they always making fun of me? Justin still thinks dairy doesn't bother him. That's the thing. He still thinks <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't bother me. Extra cheese, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it does, though. I think it does. I know. We I'll, don't. I'll put that to the test. Put, no, you won't. <laughs> Never. How long exactly? I was going to say. Yeah. So, what do you guys think in terms of like? Because we talked about technology and how that's affecting you know people's postures and stuff. What do you guys think about like in the future? What do you think are going to be the big challenges or breakthroughs for? I guess for health, like, what do you guys? Well, you I guys th- see anything. In the- I think we're in the we're on this race to, hmm. and the, I think I brought this up the other day when we were talking about something <clears throat> similar. Is I think there's a lot of faith in science that it's going to evolve enough to counter all the shit that you're doing to it. Like, mm-hmm. I think we're, mm-hmm. like, I think we're in hopes that, like, sure, all this tech that we're like constantly absorbing might be doing some sort of brain damage, but I'm pretty sure by the time I'm like 35 or 40, this is like being a teenager saying this, right? Like that. You know, technology will be able to like erase that and yeah. start me over. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's a lot of faith in in science that mm-hmm. we're gonna evolve past it. Like anything that we've had that we've we've put out there that has done some sort of harm yeah. to our our health or our body, we found a well, something to yeah. do. Anything it. hard or inconvenient for some reason we've wanted to innovate. You know, and make things like uh, like like we we in, invent things to make that whole process easier. And and every time we do that, we lose like our body's natural ability to you know do something it's supposed to do. Because you got to ask yourself, how many people were freaked out when like the television came out? Could you imagine? What do you mean? It was called the boob tube. Don't you guys remember? Yeah. Well, I no, used to I don't get remember hammer- it coming out. But <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that anyway? The boob tube. I, like, I, what is that? I used to get hammered for watching. I used to love watching TV, right? I would sit in front of the, I could sit in front of the TV for hours. 
And I'd get hammered. Oh, it, it'll melt. It'll rot your brain. Or don't don't watch too much TV. It's bad for your eyes. Or yeah. all these other things. So it was definitely viewed with the same, I guess, apprehension as uh, technology. Mm-hmm. But there's a big difference. You know, TV wasn't. It wasn't as as rapid of. Uh, it, it didn't hit those dopamine levels like like technology. Like I can well, flip through. In, in well, comparison, it did. It in, ruined sleep in, for a lot of people, right? And in comparison for to the people that never had it, it was it was such an extreme difference. So we're just at a whole never extreme level. That's the thing. That was like an introduction to this whole process of disrupting a lot of these natural rhythms our yeah. body goes through, and, right? And is that the argument, right? That this is the natural progression and evolution of all of it. Like, is it really mm. that big of a deal? Or are we just a bunch of fucking old people that are going like, oh, it's going to do all these bad things? Maybe, maybe. I feel like we're gonna. I feel like we'll see it in a generation or so, and then. And then but we'll- if you're if you're already consuming it at this like fifteen second, you know, insta story rate, you know, where does it go from there? Like, I mean, are you gonna? Are we gonna be like yeah. mul- and and I? This is why I think Gary Vee believes It'll in be the holograms. Whole, no, this is why he believes like the audio thing is that I, the next level is like you're consuming information in your ears while you're also like visually watching something else. So you're uh-huh. like your ability troll- to process information will probably improve. I bet you kids today, of course, can it will process more information when they're our age than we will than we can now. I yeah. believe. that. I'll give you an example of it. My son, you know, plays these video games on his computer these like first person shooter games. If I watch him play for more than 10 minutes, I get nauseous. Mm-hmm. I actually get dizzy because they're con- he's moving so much and, and switching screens so often that I can't process it. And it makes me like, I, I actually get nauseous, yeah, you get dizzy from it, but he can process it very quickly because he's trained himself and he's young. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe something like that, like maybe, maybe when they're older, you're right. It'll be audio, visual touch, you build a multitask at very, very high levels because right. the brain's adapted. Whereas we'll be like, slow down one thing yeah. at a time and they'll make fun of us. I more. wish I knew the author of the book title for uh, like one of my friends brought up. Uh, and I actually watched a TED talk about this, about somebody that was kind of defending video games and, and that, that it actually having a positive benefit to society in the fact that it actually collectively brings people together to solve problems and, and whether or not we were going to start using that ability um, you know, to solve bigger problems or like actual real world problems by putting like immersing people into these this type of a, a program uh, to where we could all kind of figure things out. They actually and did work that. Together. They actually did that. There was a complex uh, problem, and I can't remember what it was. If it was a physics problem or if it was something with biology, but they they made it in kind of a, a video game format and just let people go and try and figure it out and work together. And they did. Mm. They figured it out in a very, very short period of time. I really? can't remember what it was. Yeah, I can't mm-hmm. remember what it was. That's interesting. They have websites where, and then they also have these websites where you can post your symptoms and issues that you have with yourself. And you have a bunch of citizen scientists and like, you know, uh, pre-med students get on there. And for free, they'll help answer questions for you and try and figure it out. And people are getting diagnoses from this websites that they were able to get within a day that they've been going to doctors for 10 years yeah. and nobody could figure out because you have all these eyes yeah. looking at the problem from well, different Well, because I look at it too because we watched Ready Player One and we were all kind of impressed at, at the idea of that. But it, the one thing kind of struck me was, so what they portrayed was everybody sort of going into this experience for themselves. And they were immersed in the game to win points and and collect things and become popular, f- like all for themselves as like their own experience and kind of an escapism mm-hmm. versus like, you know, what if they were to program it in a way where you interact with all these people, but you're all solving things and you get so, dopamine hits from actually solving. So issues. here's something that I've thought that's about. A, that's a very interesting theory. Here's something that I've thought about for a long time, because, you know, the whole like we're living in a simulation theory, right? People talk mm-hmm. about that. So I've, I always think about that because I think it's just fun. It's a fun thought experiment. But I thought to myself, like, wow, let's say we had the technology and the capability to create a real simulation with s- semi self aware or self aware programs within it that didn't know that they were programs, right? So we could create a society and we could observe it. What we could do then <clears throat> is we could plug in different problems and things to see how that society solves it. For mm. example, Let's say we want to pass some public policy to improve upon the to improve the environment, rather than passing it publicly to see how much it works or doesn't right, work. You run a simulation. We run simulations. Mm-hmm. Then that simulation tells you this one worked best, this mm. one didn't work, and then we apply it. And that's that was some that's something I've been thinking about for a long time. That where, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, like how do we clean up the oceans? Oh, cool. 
let's try all these different applications within the simulation because we do that now anyway. We yeah. do simulations all the time anyway. We just don't have the processing power or the technology yet to create a simulation where you'd have you know billions of independently of independent you know self-aware programs operating like like that would really mimic the world. Mm -hmm. But if you did do that, that that I could imagine that that would be the first thing that we would do, right? Mm -hmm. Where we plug things in and say, okay, let's see what happens. I'm so disappointed in you that you still have yet to watch Westworld. Yeah. Hey. So disappointed yeah, in you. I, it's, I feel like you. The minute you're gonna the look on your face, is like, <laughs> the look it's like of I'm disgust. angry, right? I am. I am. Just, I feel like my dad just, <laughs> just like. Oh, he's like, boy. he doesn't want to be my friend because anymore. I know you so like, well, son. I, I just, you know, I have so much more. Well, Justin, tell me right now, if, yeah. can you think of a single show that's on TV right now or that's been on TV in the last five years that fits Sal more than that show? No, <sighs> no, because it's. <laughs> It, it it really stretches, uh, you know, your thought process, and especially like with technology. And what we're talking about right now. Yeah, all right, exactly. All right. I'll try. I'll try. What I watched like a couple episodes, and then we hadn't watched anymore. Well, you got to let the characters build, dude. All right, all right, all right. And that was just the first season. Jesus, right? Like the all guy right, who reads right. the back of a book Jesus. and is like, "This isn't for me." Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I yeah, do yeah, do that. Yeah. Not enough action. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do do that. <laughs> I read the back. Like, uh, yeah, it's, I don't it's, like this book. <laughs> 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 You know, but but looking ahead, I can say, I feel like I can predict, uh, just based off of what I know, and who knows, I'm guessing, right? But I feel like I can predict predict a few things that I think will make just revolutionary changes to how we approach health. Like I think there's three there's three main things that I can see right now that I can identify that I think are going to completely change how we approach different aspects of our health. One of them is the use of, because uh, you're starting to see lot, lots and lots of studies on the use of psychedelic substances for mental health and psychology. I think that mm. is going to revolutionize mm -hmm. psych psychiatric health completely. I don't think it's the like, let the public use it and change whatever. I do think that therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists are going to be able to use these substances to get people to kind of break out of their, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be that big of a. Oh, game. I think it's going to be huge, dude. A hundred percent. I think. I think that. I think it's going to help. I think it's going to be positive. I think it's uh, similar to what we're finding with marijuana and cannabis and how many people that it can help. I don't think it's going to be like holy shit. Game now, for some people, I think it can be holy shit game changer which is why it'll pass why it will be utilized and i i'm i'm all pro and all well, for so, it. so but i think that substances like that that and that and ayahuasca and a lot of these other these tools that people are using right now to become even more self-aware i think that they are huge for people that hadn't tapped into that and so if you're somebody struggling relationship wise or you have ptsd or you have something that has got you stuck somewhere in your life and you get the chance to use this through therapy i can see that being just and that's where i think the revolution but i don't but that's what but why i don't think it's a revolution and why i don't think it's big enough i don't think it's going to be a large enough percentage dude the that, preliminary studies are <clears throat> i know are, are I, we talk crazy, about it dude. I, and i think and i'm and I'm, i think in the right hands with the right therapist i think when you're talking about people who are dealing with trauma or dealing with like think about it this way right I'll, here's a simple example. We're in fitness. From uh, from my standpoint, from where I'm sitting here in this chair, knowing what I know about fitness, when I see somebody who's 80 pounds overweight, it seems so fucking simple. I can look at them and be like, "Dude, you're killing yourself." And they can even say, "I know. I'm. I'm. I feel terrible. I'm unhealthy. I just don't know why I can't change these things about myself. I can't figure it out. I don't know what's going on. I feel like." You know, those types of things used with therapy will get people to shift just enough to be like, fuck, those are the changes. I need to make those changes and I will make those changes. I feel like it's going to happen with addiction. Mm -hmm. I think it'll happen with depression, PTSD. I think it's going to revolutionize talk therapy because talk therapy can be effective, but it takes a long fucking time. And it also requires that you are fearless enough to face your fears. Like if I'm a, if I had a terrible childhood abuse and trauma, one of the biggest stumbling blocks to dealing with that is being able to face it and just talk about it. You know how mm -hmm. hard that is for some people? Yeah. They don't even want to talk about it. Those substances so far, what the studies are showing is 
it allows people to. That's why they're so effective with uh, with PTSD. I mean, no, no doubt, no doubt that it, I agree that it should be legal. I, I, I mean, you, you we've talked sure, on the sure, show sure. how I feel and we all feel about just drugs in general. But like I think I, it's going to be. A, I think it's going to be a revolution. <clears throat> I, I really think. Do. I think it's going to feel that way at first. The same way probably it feels for a lot of people now that are around cannabis in the last year or two because their their states just now getting on board. You know, but for those of people like you and I that have been reading it and involved in it for a really long time, it's not like so revolutionary mm -hmm. to us anymore it's like these are obvious and then what's going to happen is just like what we see with cannabis you see people starting to bastardize it and glorify it and i think there's going to be a, a lot of conversation which is why i am already trying to change my tune around cannabis as pro cannabis as i am is again just like anything else sure, now it's that going too far right person. it's going too far it's going to go now that it's going to become legal now, now it's mm -hmm. the next cool thing it and i know this because the types of dms that i'm getting it's I get a lot of DMs about people like wanting me to help them. Like, how do I use cannabis into my life? And I'm like, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. I mean, why? You don't need to have it in there. I'm just because no. I say I'm pro and I like it or whatever. Like that doesn't mean like you. So should. here's what I think. I and, and we'll use cannabis as an example. I think cannabinoid science will also revolutionize medicine in many ways. Now, I don't think it's cannabis itself. Now, cannabis itself. Remember, it comes in a plant. You can use it. You know, you can smoke it. You can eat it. Whatever. <clears throat> But we're still figuring out how the cannabinoid system really works and how to mess with it or play with it or modulate it to give you positive effects on your health. So I think cannabis was the door. Mm -hmm. Now we're walking through the door and we're going, holy shit, look at this entire system without the within the body. I mean- the well, there's whole new areas of research that's that we're what I mean. just starting to get into, and then the the gut biome too. That's on, the other one. On top of all this topic with like chemicals that now we're able to, you know, legally sort of apply and see, you know, how this all plays out. I think that's that's definitely going to be game changing. There's no doubt. I think we all agree on that one. Yeah, that, that's there, another one. Like, there's, I, like, there's no doubt. We have it. micro, we have microbiome, we have cannabinoid science, we have psychedelic research. Because what I think is going to happen with the psychedelics isn't so much oh my God, magic mushrooms are so magical. It's going to be learning about the human psyche. Mm -hmm. That's what it's going to revolutionize. Mm -hmm. It's going to let them, they're, they're going to be able to, just, to, to explore human consciousness. When you have people who've been doing this for a living from a Western medicine standpoint, and now they've got this new tool, I feel like they're going to understand the human psyche from a completely different angle, well, and it's gonna—that's what I think is gonna be revolutionary. It's like, it's like Western science is finally catching up to the holistic mentality. It's right? combining them. Yeah. Now, now we're yeah exactly. It's the merger of all this yes. because now, now we actually have definitions and we have studies that can mm -hmm. kind of show how each one affects the different systems of the body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna be yeah, really powerful. I, I think the microbiome ones. Another one. Like I think what's gonna happen at some point is they're gonna be able to look at your symptoms, your health problems. And they're going to test your gut, and then they're going to be able to create a custom microbiome capsule or whatever that you take, and it's going to give you the ideal, you know, microbiome flora that you need for your particular body for your particular issues. God, don't you question though if that's the right yeah. way to do it or not? The right way to do it, right? You know, I know what you mean by that. Um, almost like a pill that gets you in shape, right? Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean by that. I mean, because isn't that just going to give me more free? It's just going to tell me like, oh fuck yeah, I can go fuck Not this up. The well, well, that's for all the old people, right? Like, the, like new, they're gonna they're gonna genetically modify. You know, like people are gonna, mm -hmm. you know, like get into like the, I want to have a kid that has all these traits, and I want to have all this, and like literally, it's gonna be you know you know a set option of all these different traits that you can just choose. Mm. And it's going to be like, it's going to get really weird on that end of it because now, you know, what are we doing? Like we're, we're creating, we're creating life in a sense, like to, and and making it, you know, exactly how I want it to play out versus just letting it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's another one. Uh, 3d printers. I just read this in, in science daily today. They are talking about 3d printing food. What? Yeah. So they'll they're able to take what? carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and print them in layers in ways that change their texture, their mouth feel, and change their absorption. Wow! Right with so, real organic material. They yeah, yeah. So so they'll be able to modify or change. So you'll have a certain macronutrient profile, but when you eat it, it's going to feel like something else, hmm. or the way your body absorbs, it's going to change. Because now we can print things on a at some point molecular level. At some mm -hmm. point, we'll be able to print molecule by molecule, you know, level to where we'll be able to, 
Like I'll be able to make a food look like whatever I want and change its texture and how your body absorbs it and have the macros that you want. That's processed so food. So make your, be, like, your chicken breast taste like Snickers uh, bars? Make it crunchy, make it softer, make it <laughs> oh, whatever. Weird. I mean, how crazy. Like is that's it? what microwaves will look like in the future. Instead yeah. of like microwaving food, you like put your chicken breast in there and you like doot, 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 doot. And then mm-hmm. out comes the popcorn flavored mm-hmm. you or, know, chicken or, breast now. Hey, we, <laughs> they'll also be able to, to customize food materials that ex- to, ex- to exhibit longer storage times, enhanced function, uh, functionality in terms of body absorption. <clears throat> How about that, right? Be able to maximize food through 3D printing, processed foods so that you absorb it in a much more, I don't know, useful way or whatever. Yeah. That's going to be pretty fucking weird, man. Dude, that's weird. Yeah. I mean, what we're talking about is basically we're all preparing for interstellar travel, <laughs> you know, at that point. Like, we can we can manage all of that. We can have food where we just print it on demand. And, like, so, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting to think about that. Yeah. Like, what are we all progressing towards? Yeah, I think 3D printers are going to are they're going to disrupt the world in such a massive, massive way, and they're going to try and regulate and control it as much yeah. as they possibly can. I wonder can. how long it'll take for them to get off the ground because of that. Because of what they're, they're, they're trying to stop it. Because with it's going to disrupt so much. You got to know that they that you anybody who's around it or knows that it's coming knows that it's going to disrupt a ton of different industries. And because of that, I feel like they're going to make it really, really tough. They're scram- I think they're scrambling right now. Yeah, they're already super accessible. Yeah. Well, I think they're scrambling right now to figure out. I want to see one. A real I've seen one on YouTube and show that. They're right, so right. expensive and they don't really do you know the stuff that we're talking about yet. Not I yet. think we're like 10, 15, 20 years away from. Like really, like in your house, three D printer that's cheap. Yeah, you know we're we're kind of we're not there. We're not, but we're going to get there to where we, at some point you'll be able to three D print uh, things on a molecular level, like I said, and you'll be able to make your own drugs. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'll be able to print opium or that's going to be weird. You know, print medication. Well, before of, all that, I feel like that's probably in the the very very future, right? Like that's 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 far from here. Like not, I don't know, dude. Dude, think it's got to be at least. Think like about what we've seen happen with the I, iPhone one to now. Just think about yeah. how much that has evolved. I mean, with Moore's law, that's all compounding, right? So right. It, it's going to keep, it's going to speed up. So as fast as we saw that, the mm. next ten years are going to be what ten times faster than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So think from that. So if there's a three D printer already out yeah. and it's capable, it's, what makes you think it's not going to be evolved and then? That's crazy. It's just going to change. It'll it'll decentralize everything to such a crazy extent. I mean, patents will be obsolete. Yeah. You know, huge manufacturers and huge companies, these mega companies, they're going to kind of become obsolete because you'll be able to 3D print in a fucking 3D printer. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's going to decentralize everything to the point. Like, are they going to be. Maybe right when the dollar is gone is a perfect time when this is all going to happen. Like, yeah. How maybe. weird is that, that all this stuff is happening right now yeah. with, I don't with think all it, your bitcoins and things like that? And then maybe money's going to go away and it won't, it won't matter that money's going away because most all of us have a 3D printer in our house and can pr- pr- print majority of the things that we want or think we need. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's going to be kind of weird. I, I don't think it's going to be a, a challenge to humanity. I think it'll be a challenge to uh, markets and manufacturers and stuff like that. And there may be like a kind of a power struggle, but I don't know. Good luck. Once something comes out that people want, it's like, you can't stop. Well, it's going to be how we watch the music industry get disrupted. Oh, Mm. I mean, look how quick that flipped on its head and changed from being lawsuits with Napster and like, oh my God, trying to just trying as hard as they yeah, can. Yeah, trying so hard to stop it and then put a bottle. Cap I mean, on here it. we are now today that that anybody who's been born in the last ten years don't know any other way than mm-hmm. to just get your music streamed to you. Like the only thing about do walking guys, down to a CD store. Do and, you guys think like yeah. the the era of you know 150 million dollar movie budgets is going to be over pretty soon? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you yeah. I mean? I mean, it's it. You just see that already with, uh, you know, Netflix and then creating all these series, like really well-produced series. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, and and just having that access on demand is, I mean, that's, that's the direction we're going with everything. We want to be able to have it when I want to have it. It's not like this movie's coming out here, here, you know, at, at this time and you have to be, it's like, that's not convenient for me. You know what I mean? Right. Like everybody wants it like the way that they want it. And so it just makes sense to me that there's just going to be more of this streaming mentality. Where oh, look how much money into it. The, people going to the movies, how much it's declined yeah. in the last like five years. That's going. why they had to come out with that whole nine ninety nine, and you get access to as many movies as you want because movies are just. Yeah. And you see all these theaters scrambling right now. Look at how many of these theaters now are popping up with the loungers and then serve food and beer like. 
they're doing everything they can to try and figure out how do we drive people in here because it's just getting to the point where we would much rather stay at home, watch it on my 80-inch big screen and stream it where I got to pay four ninety nine at the comfort of my own home. It's like, yeah. and what's happening now too is we're finding out that uh, like the, I think the new model for movies are these, you know, five, six part series that are streamed together hmm. versus one long movie for two hours and that's it and it's over. Mm-hmm. It's taking that same concept and breaking it up in, you know, half hour, one hour slots. Yeah, and, that must be easier production wise. Of course. To string it out that way. Right. Yeah. And like the hustle for it's less than like you already see. I'm sure it's like already affected a lot of people's jobs in that industry to where like they used to have like a like a solid um, you know, they knew like for a year I'm going to be shooting this, you know, mm-hmm. versus now it's just like there's this. this and, and, in, and in the past, there was so much more art to making a movie and, and creating a movie that, you know, their Netflix is taking all the, the artistic part out and using analytics, mm-hmm. you know, so there it's we can we can look and say, you know. X amount of people love movies that are, you know, that watch adventure movies. They Mm -hmm. want this. They want X, Y, and Z. You know, 90% of them want a character that is buff. 90% want uh, a a black girl and a white guy and an Asian guy inside it. Like, I mean, they are literally starting to create movies for the the analytics that we're giving them by the yeah. the, the flicks that we already I choose. like kevin spacey with kevin bacon right two kevins yeah. make a right yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like this algorithm that they just go yeah. With. yeah well how soon until they figure out how soon until the technology exists to make cgi so realistic that you won't even have actors anymore It'll be pure. Oh, that's, I know. A, that's already happened. They they sell their likeness. They did at that, that in, point. They did that in Star Wars, right? They did. Yeah. How cool is that going to be for like a future? See, and I believe this. Okay, so on that point, I believe the future are these Instagram and YouTube stars that they already have. 10 million people following them on YouTube. They have no acting skills whatsoever. It doesn't matter because we just want your look and your name. Oh, yeah. And you pay the rights to me. You pay me a million dollars. I'm now the feature person on this film. Of course. but Because you already, has, they you already can, have an audience. Yeah, yeah. They, can use the, they can use the CGI to make, make my voice, make my look. It's totally me. And then I can put it out, push it out to my 4 million people or 10 million people that are following me on YouTube. So as far as getting people to watch it, all of my, of course, all my fans are going to watch a movie that I'm produced, that's produced around me, right? Wow. Yeah. I think that's the future of how movie stars will be. It's all like super engineered. Everything's super engineered versus, and you see this in the music industry too, like how they've, they've honed in on like certain chord structures, certain sounds that like people respond to the best. And then they just orchestrate like these, these pop songs these hit songs dude mm-hmm. you guys both have kids right now and you both have kids that use youtube if they if they, what i don't know what movie you took both your kids to last but if they had a choice between that movie that you just took them to or a stupid ass high school special type weird movie with their three favorites of course, it's a youtube star right yeah. They don't know movie stars. They know no. YouTube they don't. stars. No. And it, and, if, and, it, and it could be the worst written movie. It could oh, be terrible, God. but because it has two or three of their YouTube stars they already, they already follow, they would love to watch that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where it's going. Yeah, it's going to be a- I jumped into a, a, a pool filled with lemons. Nah. What? Let's make a, <laughs> let's make a movie out of this. Like what? That's what YouTube is to me. Yeah. You know, they just do dumb fucking shit. It's a pool of lemons. <laughs> yeah. YouTube. Yeah, it's, just a, it's just a big pool of lemons. Hashtag pool of lemons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I mean, there's definitely- Watch me light my crotch on fire. Yeah. <laughs> there's definitely some going to be some interesting challenges for us. I, it's hard to predict, right? Because things are changing so quickly. It's going to be hard to predict what's going to pose. Like, I just read an article about, uh, I guess there was this, I don't remember where it was, but- there was a group of psychologists, psychiatrists that got together and, and they all met and talked about the potential challenges of sex robots and what that's going to cause. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, yeah. dude. And, you know, I'll tell you what, like the the separation of sex from of sex from reproduction happened uh, largely in the 1960s, right? With the with birth control pill, all of a sudden women had control over their reproductive systems. And so if they could have sex and not get pregnant. And it was much better control than, say, condoms was. And that caused some challenges there because for all of human history, you, you can't separate sex from reproduction from you know human connection. But we did. We separated one of those things. And so people argue as to whether or not that contributed to the higher divorce rate, if that contributed to what, you know, all these different things. But it definitely was a challenge. It's definitely a challenge for, for, for us because it was something we need to learn about. 
Well, now moving forward, if we develop these sex robots, like we've now eliminated the human element mm. out of sex, but it's it, it's still kind of like a human. Or the repercussions of sex or the responsibility of sex completely to where now you have a robot that can fill your every fantasy and desire. Is that a good or bad thing? I think that's going to pose some pretty fucking crazy challenges for oh, yeah. mankind moving forward. I think that'll be a big one. Like, are people going to want to be with other people if they can just know. be with a robot? It scares the shit out of me to think about sticking my dick in a robot. I know that for sure. What like, if you can't even like, tell? What hap- Even if I couldn't tell, right? Let's say it's amazing. I can't tell. But the fucking thing malfunctions. You know why? <laughs> <laughs> why I'm in full throw, dude. Yeah. And he just, you know, swings around or something really quick. <laughs> Air roar. <laughs> yeah. Air goes, roar. Right. Like, starts throwing the, you. The Wi-Fi fucking goes down right in the middle yeah. of some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> while why she's sucking my dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of a sudden, this the fucking, isn't Exit only. Ooh, disc- all of a sudden, you see like yeah, Wi-Fi disconnected. <laughs> While you're having sex with it, ah, let it go. While you're having sex with it, Justin hacks it and makes it turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. His, Tur- man, his turn man voice comes Whoa, over. Your grip. Like, Adam, get to work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he turns Adam, up. Quit messing around there. He's all, hey Sal, watch this. I'm gonna yeah. turn up the aggressive level to 15. Yeah. <laughs> ah! he's, he's throwing his safe word yeah, out. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But think about it this way. I'll pose some questions. But once they get all that all out, like yeah, I'll pose some questions to you right now right let's say there's a couple and you know they like each other and have sex and they're pretty adventurous and every once in a while they, they tease you know the, the husband or the guy's like hey you know what if we had a threesome and they laugh but they never actually do it but would they do it with another robot now so would they do they. a threesome yes maybe they would think about all the like the things that people would allow themselves to do knowing yeah. that it's not a person. The, o- the only way that it, I see mm. this, and I, you know, it's and funny. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I but just I think re- the human, human I, people can get real crazy. I just Again, re- watch Westworld. <laughs> yeah, right? Re- I know. See how this I, plays I, out. I, I agree. Yeah, I've seen it. I, I just uh, re-watched um, Ex Machina. Oh, what a great movie. I know, such a good movie. What now, a great movie. Where, where I, because you know, we're first going to see the, the first sex robots come out, and they're going to be pretty lame, let's be honest. Yeah. But if the, if it evolves, it's just gonna be a torso. If it evolves to Westworld, if it evolves to where the AI is like ridiculous, where it responds like a human would respond, and they interact with you, and they have like emotions, and they can read your face signals and give you, I mean, now Ooh. that's crazy. But yeah. I, I right now, I because I can't quite fathom that yet. You know, I see like this robot that you know is really real, real looking, feeling all that stuff like that. But then it's just not gonna have the same. You know, in sure. you know, intuitive uh, responses that like it, you can it, tell it's a robot, yeah. right? You can tell it's a robot, but and, and, and you know, in, in the Ex Machina movie, that's the whole test, right? That's the whole movie's all about that. Is it's well, called pa- the Turing test? I think it's called. yeah, something yeah. like that, right? Mm-hmm. Where the, even a human can't can't figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, I mean, fuck, we get to that level, then yeah, then we're in Westworld, dude. Well, then you re- you've replaced people, and it's it. it and, I mean, strange things are already happening with sex robots already. There's already brothels being opened up in yeah certain countries where people can pay to have sex with a, a sex doll. There's already companies that are creating sex dolls to fill dysfunctional fetishes and weird things like some that look like kids or some that look like well, you can see, strangle now them. Weird shit. Here's where it gets yeah. really edgy, right? Is And you, we brought this up once before is, you know, what happens when they do that and, you know... Uh, Rapist and yeah, and murderers and pedophiles. Pet- and- it all goes down. I don't, you know what's you know, funny? Like what so happened? This so article what that ha- was- what happens when you know they they show that you know because of course not every but ev- not every country every society is going to jump on board right away. But there's always going to be that that country that's edgy enough to to do something and pass it. Say okay, we're fine. You can have sex. Everyone can have them. And now all of a sudden you see pedophiles and rapists and all those things and rape charges, things like that yeah. declining. Well, so so I, this is what the article you talked about. You let them do it and then you just monitor them. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is what the article talked about and it said that, you know, people have said that, but there's zero evidence that that would happen is what they said in the article. They said the opposite may be true. It may in Promote fact- Promote more? It may it in you fact- think it's more okay and Yeah, it may, it may fuel it and create a, Shit. you know, like take away the taboo or- if you, Here's the thing with people. And I guess we, you'd have that. You know what? You, I mean, you'd have to ask a rapist that or a pedophile that. Like, does is is the the thrill of it's not right and it's wrong that you're doing it that you're you you get off on that or is it just something you feel? Because I would. I mean, I'm total. I have no idea. I don't have any rapist friends or pedophiles. Or friends. <laughs> Rap, rapist friends. <laughs> yeah. No, not usually friends. Yeah. Friend yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but I I would think that they think that they have some 
you know, they're fucked up in the head and they know it and they still do it. Like it's it's like an addiction, like he, they can't get away from it. Here's the, and I would think there's some sort of a guilt that goes with that, but I don't know. Uh, here's know? the scary thing about about mm. people. The scary thing about people is that we're capable of almost anything. And it and it's in evidence is all around you. Look at the twentieth century. Look at what people were capable of in 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 Nazi Germany and communist countries and mm -hmm. what you know, there's there's still play there's still you know places in the world where they do terrible things and it's accepted like it's a strange the human psyche is a very strange phenomenon and so some some people think if we do this and allow this it will only normalize and create a situation where things get much worse yeah it's like who, worst case scenario yeah who knows you know what i mean that's the thing that really the answer is the, the, the who knows nobody knows mm. but it's it's something that's so never have we had sex with it's human like figures that yeah. we thought we were human that, you're right though it does present a whole new like variables out there that could be, potentially be massive problems oh, i guarantee you people will marry robots 100 yeah. percent. i guarantee you the next big because we just had gay marriage, so now we're cool, right? Now we've kind of solved all of them, and like, you want to marry who you want to marry, go for it. Hmm. I I think the future big pro, the big like discrimination or whatever you want to call it, case is going to be, can't should we allow people to marry robots or should we give citizenship or rights and liberties to AI machines? Like, let's say people want to bang their robots and the robots are, are, are intelligent, artificial intelligence, but they're still robots and they love them now. They're in love with them. And so they, they go to court and they're like, you know, they fight and they're like, look, I love this robot. I'm not hurting anybody. Yeah. Why can't I, be, why can't this be, a, yeah, why can't a, we treat him like right? a sentient yeah, being? Well, no, why can't we do this? And people will, people may give in and be like, you know what? He's not hurting anybody. He loves the robot. Fine. Go for it. Love it. Right. Then the next thing will be, well, now my, now we need to give my robot rights. I want to get my robot rights because I think he's that she's real or he's real. He thinks he's you know whatever. Yeah, like I don't that, know. If, I don't know if that'll ever happen because it's human rights, right? You're not human, no matter what, no matter how badass we make. That may or, actually be a very, uh, what's the word, offensive thing to say in the future. Yeah. It may actually be like he Adam Schaefer said on my yeah. episode, whatever that they're not human. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, 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 oh. Like, like think you're about so that. Ignorant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the future, yeah. <laughs> somebody's just like scrolling through our catalog. And they're like, God, these guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Though it's going to be a crazy problem. I think it'll be a major challenge. We're going to have to figure out what the fuck. Yeah. To do with that, or you know what? I don't know. Oh, I'm already fascinated with the one that we're dealing with right now. With it, with the whole, and we've mentioned this multiple times on the show. Is and going back to the sex dolls and porn, and uh, I think it's nuts what we're seeing with with men and the erect, erectile dysfunction. Oh, just I, with pornography? Yeah, just with yeah. pornography. Like, I mean, I trip out. To, I still trip out every day. I get on my Instagram. And, you know, naked asses and things fl flying up in my feed and stuff. And I'm going like, damn, this is crazy, dude. Like, mm. I, I'm 37 years old, so it's like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's I've seen enough naked bodies in my life that it's not a big deal. But I think, like, dude, if I was a 17-year-old boy, like... Well, isn't that interesting that... Fuck I mean, the likes on the pictures, dude. Yeah. I'm on here all day just checking out all these Instagram mm -hmm. models. Do you, notice you know what I'm saying? That's all I'm doing as a 17-year-old. How that's affected, like, real life, too. You know, with the way, like, I've seen a lot more younger girls, like, dressing super provocatively... You know, whereas like when we were growing up, like no way, you know, but like it's, it's almost like it's a competitive, I don't know, like if, if, if I've seen that all the time on my phone and they're trying to get attention from a boy, I wonder what that, you dude, know, looks my like. favorite is that I see all the time now is the, the, the cute little, you know, 18 to 20 year old girl who's got her boyfriend, you know, falling around with the camera and oh taking pictures. Oh God. She's taking all the sexy poses and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it makes me want to just go on all those Instagram I pages. I saw it in the pool, ask, dude. It was so are weird. You, are you, did you see? It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere now. Yeah, this girl was like pretending to like I'd grab a beach ball and like she was wearing like a G-string and this guy's taking a picture. I'm like, what? the hell's going on here is it a photo shoot no. yeah i don't i don't i'm just so i'm so glad point. now that mind pump's grown to the point where we actually have like a videographer and photographer <laughs> and false for us. so yeah. i ain't gonna do that shit anymore dude like i just yeah, dude. it was my least favorite part about when we first started all this was having to post pictures and and take pictures and do all this stuff i felt oh, you know what the worst was what was that one um the one that we abandoned that was like a new like social media oh, oh yeah, yeah that was like real time like you, you do like what was that called adam it was Vero. No, 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 no. no. It wasn't Vero. Periscope? Periscope. Periscope. Thank oh, you. Oh, that one. Oh, oh, yeah. I think Vero we abandoned too. Yeah. Nothing happened with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Periscope. Was I hated that. 
<laughs> it's yeah. just like, you know, you don't see anybody. You just see yourself and then you see all these like, uh, Little like hearts and, and those, like, it's so like fucking narcissistic. You it's, know what? It's we, insane. It's funny. We are talking about that right now because I've been, I hate Insta stories too. Like I hate doing them myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, just still, just feels weird. Just yeah. feels narcissistic. It feels, it feels stupid to me. But it feels I, filthy. Yeah, it not does. in a good way. Either. It does. It doesn't. Yeah. And 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 yeah. I know that. But I, I'm like trying to find my way. Like, how do I put like a cool, positive spin on it to where? Because I get it. Like, I mean, if I'm somebody who listens to the show, I love the show. I would love to be able to interact with you guys. Right. So something that I some I was, entertaining or something. I was talking to Taylor, and you know, I guess we'll just talk about this on. We'll talk about it live. We'll see if we get any response for it. To, if people really like the idea, <clears throat> but I thought doing like a you know once a week. So, you know, so in a month's time, you would Sal, Justin, Adam, and Doug even, where there's a, you know, 30-minute window on the main page where you can interact, with, and it's scheduled. So it's like Friday at 4 p.m. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. The actually. first week, the first Friday of the month is, you know, you can interact with Justin on the Mind Pump Media page, and it's like a hot seat. It's just, you can ask yeah. him anything, personal stuff, mm-hmm. fitness stuff. So that's fun. It's just the everyday thing, I think. Yeah, that, that's the part that, gets, yeah. that, that I just can't do. I can't, I can't fake this, you know, and I see it in my feed all the time, all these, these motivational videos yeah. and people that are t- trying to teach others how to, and, and I know, I know that's, they're coming from a good place. So this is not me talking shit. This is just my personal opinion on why I'm not a big fan of it myself. And, and I know some of these people and I see some of these people in their lives and it's like, dude, they're, they're still trying to figure things out themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. And then they're out here giving, trying to give expert advice on, on motivation and what they need to be doing. And sometimes a lot of the information is really bad information. You know, but it sounds cool because it's hyphy, you know, and yeah. they got they got a cool car and they look good and they look awesome. And, you know, I, real dramatic music. Yeah. All yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So I'm 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 wondering where all that's going to kind of transition and what's going to happen to the evolution of that in the next, you know, three to five years, because that's new as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. what what were we doing that was like anything yeah, like how, how old is, how old is, is Instagram? So weird. Pff, only a couple of years. Or what, what, five, maybe. Really? If that, that's it, five years, five years, yeah. that's crazy. It just took off and took over. Yeah, it's, I don't know. We'll see what, we'll see what it looks like. I have no idea what to predict. I wish I did because then I'd be a billionaire. I could create like a, <laughs> hey, no. a new social media platform. Well, it would, seems that we're getting, it's, we're, there's a demand for even being connected more and more and more. That's mm-hmm. the, the scary thing, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, we're it. gonna have drones just flying you behind know, us. You know, what could very well happen is we'll reach a breaking point where, you know, we're getting more and more and more of the stuff where people are just going to revert back and it's going to become really, really cool to not be super connected, to not be on social media, to mm-hmm. connect with nature, to be active, to take care of yourself in those other ways. We may just see a, a, a pendulum swing in the other direction, which is funny because we're not predicting that right now in this episode, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised. You never. Well, I see a lot. I don't know, dude. I like we remember we went through and we saw some some like uh, Joey Swoles, for example. Like I'm like he abandoned his his uh, Instagram handle. You know, and there's certain people like that that have gotten so much attention that like now they just like have abandoned it and, and mm. are are doing other things. But it's like I feel like did he s- abandon his Joey Swole thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I'm blocked, so I don't know. I tried to, <laughs> yeah, I tried still, to find it through somebody else. Like, yeah, just, are just you just blocked to, too? to check in on him? Yeah. Have you I'm guys blocked. seen who's all blocked? You? How many how many blocks are you up to now? I don't. How do I see who's blocked me? Well, you have to go to look at their page. Oh, so you'd okay. have to go look at Joey Swole's yeah. right now to see. That Joe you're... Donnelly blocked me. Joey Swole blocked me. I don't know who. Yeah, else that's kind of big that's yeah right. wonder what he's up to huh yeah, yeah. you know who i yeah. noticed that uh it was a, a couple of them shreds guys remember that uh, kid um alex turner or alex michael turner with that he's tatted so. it up uh, i think you and him yeah that's right you and him kind of got it in the oh, i did yeah, yeah yeah so i think he's blocked us too <laughs> yeah he popped up on my feed with oh with the guys from live fit he's doing work with them and i was like what uh, wait a second isn't this like these guys are all using each other like it's so hilarious yep all these these brands are all like and and they and all these these uh, aspiring athletes or whatever the fuck you call them on Instagram oh, wanna be yeah. models they just hop from like brand to brand to brand mm-hmm. and then push the stuff it's like and and I feel like it's 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 creating this uh this false perception of success as far as a business is concerned and with and that's the biggest problem that I have when I see 
people trying to mimic what they see. And it's like, oh, if dude. you only knew yeah. that this, there's a the flash in the pan. It is. It's not a real substantial business. I don't give a fuck if the kid's driving around a badass R8 or a badass fucking new, you know, Mercedes or Ferrari. It doesn't matter that he, because he's got these cool things that you see on Instagram, if he even has that. Cause a right. lot of these, I think, are, I think it's going to be cool. It. I think it's going to be cool to not show all that shit. That's what I think. I think right now it's cool to show how flashy and great you are, but at some point there's gonna be a little bit of a, of a backlash. Man. I think there's going to be a backlash where I people... Don't know. Are, I, I disagree with that. Dude, I am watching the... the Here's the thing. There's you... <laughs> I, I'm watching this the the whole like social justice warrior thing explode, and at some point it's going to be like, oh, that's "Hey, you rich backlash. person, you spent all that money on whatever you could have been." Maybe, and then people are going to show off how how much they help people. No, you already seen it with the market, no. dude. Oh, I, no. Mm. See, you're, you're again. This is you sounding like you're 40. You know what I'm saying? Like this is that you're talking to. Maybe our generation like starts to give a backlash of it. Maybe like the people that are listening to the show. No, right I now? think the younger people are the no. ones that are seeking it. No. Really? No, well, course, let me ask you this: Not as long how, as Netflix and movie stars and all that stuff still exist well, and cool cool flashy well, shit. Well, no, let me ask you this. How many food companies and, and companies in general do you remember as a kid that advertised how much they donated to other people, that advertised that doesn't matter. how environmentally That's friendly different. they you're were? Appealing to your, to your t- nutrition and, you know, and the desire to no, to it, want to want especially with with kids that are un, that are underprivileged, man, and you as a kid that that grew up poor and didn't have things, and you and you see movies that and you see cool cars and you know people that have that stuff like that, you want it, dude. And when you're that young, you don't realize why you want it, and you don't realize why you're driven to have it so bad. Well, see, the st- the statistics just, are showing that that millennials want to own less and want to share more, or they want to they want to be able to share more with like this gig economy. Now, I agree with that. Now, I, I think that I think and so. That, I think what's happening, and you can already see, like I said. It, you used to never see companies that were like, hey, for every membership you buy with us, we'll donate one to a, a family. Or here's the charities we work for. Or look at our packaging. It's environmentally friendly. Nobody gave a shit before. Today, it's a, it's a, it's like a selling point. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a nice company, but what do they do for poor people? Or what do they do for the environment? That's a thing now. And I, so no, I, I, I agree with all of that, but I, st- I think you were talking about- You don't think there's going to be a backlash when they're showing like- Dude, look at that celebrity like who's just flaunting all the freaking yachts and shit that they I have. I think that already happens now. I think there's already people that don't like that and it bothers them. And a lot of them are jealous and haters. Yeah. I think that- But I, they but still I, draw like the most eyes. For sure. And so, yeah, I think I definitely think that's changing as far as like that being in favor, but it's still going to be popular. Sure. You but I, I do mean? think that there might be some- I mean, I still watch them. I still like them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I still yeah. I still watch it. I mean, a cool, a cool car. I like cool cars, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you got me. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if <laughs> yeah. I think you're an idiot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I think that's a terrible way to sell a protein drink. Like, I, no matter what, like, it doesn't matter. I'm still watching. Right. I'm still watching. I just think what's happening is that the 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 kids that are trying to emulate those these people that have X amount of followers and are using strategies like this to gain attention, they don't realize that attention and, and building a business are, are aren't the same thing. No. And just because you have a bunch of eyes on you and attention for having a flashy car and doing those things doesn't mean you have a great business plan. Mm. And even if you are making a little bit, I mean, you know, here's a, here's one talk about backlashes that we're going to see that I think is fascinating. And I'm, I, I'm not going to call somebody out. I feel like I want to though. Yeah. I'm proud of you. So, uh, I openly admit that our apparel line or our merch line, whatever the fuck you want to call it, whatever the, the trendy word for it is now, basically a way for us to advertise because people buy our shirts and wear it and rep it because they like the brand. Mm-hmm. You know, we get uh, shirts from overseas. We get the, the best quality we can for the cheapest price. Um, it, it usually ranges somewhere between 8 to $12 a shirt that it costs us, and then we flip it for double the price, and that's how much money we make off of it. This model is uh, the same model that almost every single person you see on Instagram that has millions of followers is using right now. And the bottom line is, I mean, it's a t-shirt, it's cool, but it's not that fucking cool. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's not, and I think that more and more people are going to become savvy that, and many of these people that we know that have hundreds of thousands or millions of followers, most, most, most of them are making six figures plus off of this you know, quote unquote, merch line or apparel line. I mean, I, th- yeah. I, th- I thought I thought I saw some stats on Jake Paul or whatever 
and the amount yeah, of money. Logan Paul and those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah that's like thirty half, million dollars a year on a, over half of their incomes just from that. Yeah, like that stuff will blow up, dude. You're not a fashion designer. You know no, what I'm saying? It's like your not. shit's cool for a bunch of seventeen year old kids that again that are tuning in because of your Ferrari. It's just their your logo mansion. that's on it. It's like nothing yeah. fucking at all to it. Yeah, dude, that stuff is gonna that stuff will die, dude. Yeah. It'll eventually die really quick here. And I'm not saying again we do that, but that we don't look at it as even. I remember, remember when we sat in this, you know, the last studio and we all talked about it, like when we got a big enough following that was asking for shirts, Yeah, we all sat in a room and we're like, nah, I really didn't want anything to do with it. No. I was anti it for a long time. No, I know it's, it's a tough business. And plus that's why I too, we were seeking companies like Viore and like, like really good quality, like, you know, clothing that we can rep. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, yeah, you, you have to put a lot of effort yes, into it to get to that You know why? Because we know Joe, the owner, yeah. what he's probably doing today. Why we're like over he's here sourcing podcasting. materials yes. and he's like going through and like right. staying current with like all these fashion trends. And like, yes. Yeah, it's like these guys, these, and you see it a lot in the fitness space. Yeah. It's big in the fitness space is to do this and then flip and sell clothes. But none of them have any good ideas. Well, I, oh. I think when you have a, when you make a big impact on people, they just want to give you, I mean, seriously. They just want to give you money. Right. As long as you give them a reason to give you money, they will. Like, uh, what's it called? Patreon. Mm -hmm. You know, like people like you know Jordan Peterson on on Patreon makes well over six figures a month. So a month. Crazy. By the way, all the sh all of his talks, and he's one person. There's other people on he's there that special, make a lot. Of though. Yeah. Sure, but my point is, my point is, all of his talks that he does on on that where pe that people are paying for are free. People are literally just giving them money to listen to shit that you can find for free on YouTube. Mm. How fucking crazy is that? Yeah, but I love that though because to me, that's his. He's adding so much value to well, people. Well, that's what so I'm saying. That was the same that we almost did a Patreon. Remember when we first started too? We talked about that before yeah. we started to monetize, and so many people said, "Can we contribute to the Mind Pump movement because sure. you've impacted my life so much?" And we just didn't want to do that. Like, because and I think if we if we if we all didn't have other businesses that we we had income coming in. I think maybe that would have been something we'd consider because we would have been stuck in a situation where the business isn't making any money for at least a year or two, yeah. and we would need that. Yeah. So I could I just see think, that. I as, just think it's just, but that that to me that model is a, you know, I love that model. It's you know I'm it's interesting. I'm, I'm, it's I'm, going, interesting. I'm going to provide so yeah. much goddamn value that people are going to want to give me money, and yeah. that to me that's what, that's building a business, dude. Like that is really building a business because then you can't well, back to the root of it, right? Like I, I made such a fucking awesome product and I did it all out of my own resources and, and sweat and labor and all this that like you appreciated it so much. You gave me this money for it, right? I wasn't determining that price point. Right. That's but in because things are so easily accessible and so free. I think that's probably the future of a lot of, you know, a lot of this stuff. I really yeah, do. I, yeah. I, I mean, being able to sell things online and sell, I mean, look at music. Like we talked about music earlier. Like it used to be like now musicians make a lot of their money in concerts live because they're not making as much as they were selling their, yeah. they used to sell CDs and tapes. Now it's, you know, now it's, it's, you're buying individual songs. they turn songs. likes into dollars? You know, like yeah, you, like you get likes, and that's that's like oh little, god, right? Like that would they, be scary. They would try that shit, and then all of a sudden, it turn, oh, yeah. Then you see that, what we see right now. What I see right now, which is is nuts, is so many of these people chasing the YouTube, chasing the Instagram, Facebook algorithms. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like this, you know, back and forth game that the that the company's making, and then the consumers are of, you know, and their the entire business relies on that. They need. 10,000 eyes a day to make sure they sell 20 shirts a day. And if they don't have that, then they're not well, going to sell that. So how about this? Because obviously Instagram, Facebook, and all these media platforms have an algorithm and they could very easily control that and change and make oh. sure that someone pops up when they're when in, on the front page or whatever. Yeah. How long until Instagram and those companies figure that, figure out, Hey, why don't we create this person? Why don't we put this person on the front page, use them to indirectly sell and make money or influence that, the audience. Or nothing is mm. to stop them from saying like, okay, well, you know, here's your top 10, you know, people on YouTube or on Instagram that are, that have businesses that are seven figure or eight figures. And then them dipping their hands in the pot saying like, hey, oh, dude, we're sure. going to feature you as the top 10 Instagram stars or top 10 businesses on Instagram. And we're going to go ahead and take 25% of your business. Sure. Yeah. And who would, you can't say no to it. Sure. Yeah. You'd be, you'd right be, now, the only thing stopping them is integrity, but we know how long that will last. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. true. 
It's absolutely true. I, I mean, know. right now you can make YouTube videos and you can post and advertise your own shit. Some point they'll tell you not to anymore. They're gonna tell you you can't do that anymore. I know. You know what I mean? You're not gonna be able to advertise your own stuff on YouTube in the future. I guarantee it. Yeah, it's really interesting to see where that's gonna go for us. I mean, that's something that we we constantly are looking at. Like, okay, well, where where is this platform gonna go? And like, how important is it if we try and monetize it? Like, I have no idea what that's gonna look like in the future. Which is why too we go really sl- slow with it. I mean, this has been a constant battle with you know, us and our, our marketing team, because of course our marketing team looks at everything like leads and conversions and dollars. But I, I don't, I don't look at every part of our business like that. Sometimes it's like, okay, well, you know, we got to be thinking of what happens when that happens, right? What happens when the, the, the business, the, the company starts to say, or the, you know, YouTube or whatever says you can no longer sell or market or do any mm-hmm. of those things. And you have now built a, a structure and infrastructure around that. Like that's a big fucking deal. They'll do like, it. Yeah. Yeah, that's they'll big, do it. You know, you many hire people? two employees because if, if if that was if if YouTube was generating us twenty to thirty thousand dollars revenue, we'd have multiple employees, ne- more employees than we already have around that to keep it going and producing. And then to think that they could all of a sudden change that, they change that. Now I'm fucked. I'm still paying those employees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then now I'm not getting paid for that. Like fuck. Well, I mean, it's what happened. It's happened many times with Facebook, where yeah. you've got people making seven figures. Through advertising on Facebook, Facebook chases, changes the algorithm. Overnight, they go from seven figures to six figures. Overnight. Yeah. You know, I mean, they'll do it. They've done it before. They'll do it again. Same thing with Google, you know, Google and their AdWords. And so, like, they'll change it right away and you're fucked. Amazon, Amazon does it. Amazon does it, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, hmm. I know. I don't know. Interesting. We're kind of at the mercy of a lot of these big companies, man. Yeah. That being said, I still think it. I think it's it's phenomenal what they've done for us. I mean, how cool is that? Oh my man? god! I mean, think of just the history that Google has now. Like, if you search something and it pops up on the the first page, you can damn well feel that it's a solid solid article or it's got solid information uh-huh. because it's got so many people have looked over it already mm-hmm. and criticized the shit out of it or liked it to death or shared it to death. And that's all part of the algorithm for it to even get up there. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. You know, it's pretty yeah. cool that you can, we can access information and also feel good about the information that you're accessing because of things like that. I think that's pretty neat. Excellent. So check it out. We all have Instagram pages. Uh, you can find us all on Instagram, my page is, is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is found at Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.